Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at the Grub attack, interested in opening very popular among blitzers and people who want to avoid the strict theory. At the end of the video there will be an exercise for you so make sure to watch till the end and if it is the first time for you on this channel make sure to subscribe and activate the bell to be notified about the new content. Now let's get to the discussion. So it starts with the G4 and it already looks pretty strange. Uh, but what is the idea behind it? Uh, so we can see that g4 aims to grab some space on the king side. And white is also preparing a uh, bishop to g2 move, uh, in which case uh, the bishop will be fanchetto just like after normal g3 or something like that. So in many cases it will be similar to, for example, English opening or Catalan or any other opening where the light script bishop uh, is being fanchettoed. I mean, it will be similar in the sense of the strategic idea behind it, which is to have the active bishop of the Sloan h1 a8 diagonal, to try to make this diagonal open and to exert long-term pressure on it. But the difference is obvious, so the spawn is on g4, not on g3, which means it is quite vulnerable in many cases, and that is probably the main drawback of this opening. At the same time, if black actively trying to punish uh, white for this g4 pawn and uh, is trying to attack it somehow, this may lead to some uh, painful surprises. So that is the advantage of this opening. So it's kind of a provocation. And of course, uh, to react to this opening correctly, black should have some knowledge. What could be the most natural reply to this g4? Well, let's start with the normal e5 move. So white is not doing anything in the center and black is trying uh, to occupy the center with pawns. White continues with the bishop to g2 here, controlling this long diagonal. And already here, if you think about the development, for example, if you uh, try something like knight f6, you may realize that, well, white can continue with something like g5. So that is the difference compared to the pawn on g3 where uh, you can easily put your knight on f6 whenever you want. Uh, here, you should be ready for this sort of attack. And it may be quite annoying because it may lead to uh, losing tempi. As you can see, that bishop controls central squares. The knight doesn't have a suitable square to go away. That's why in some games, uh, black came to the idea of uh, developing this knight differently and uh, tried something like knight to e7. Also looks pretty strange, but uh, again, it makes sense when uh, white played g4, not g3, because from here, the knight may go to g6 at some point. And as you can see, because of g4, squares f4 and h4 are weakened, and the knight is just controlling them and may land on one of them, creating some concrete threats. So against g4, this move and this maneuver looks pretty logical. So, uh, let's have a look at uh, one example, how white can proceed from here. In one of the games, white decided to play c4. Now it starts looking like uh, English opening, with the difference that the pawn is on g4, not on g3. We have discussed the differences. So, black responded with the knight to c6. White continued with the knight to c3. Now we have just normal fight for central squares, uh, especially for the d5 one. Then d6. You can also uh, find this system of development in English opening, where black then tries to fanchetto the dark squid bishop. Here d6 already attacks the g4 pawn. And white continued with the g5. So this weakens a lot of squares on the king side, but apparently white is not going to castle there. On the other hand, this pawn on g5 controls some space and whenever black tries to do something like g6, let's say, this will weaken squares f6 and h6 that are already controlled. Also makes strategic sense for white. Black responded with the bishop to e6, attacking c4, and white continued with the immediate occupation of the d5 square, knight to d5. And after queen to d7, played h4, to have g5 pawn supported. And now we can see the 
other idea behind why it's uh, opening, it is to grab as much space as possible on both sides. Black decided uh, to play knight to d8 to fight with opponent's knight. So after knight d8, b7 is protected and c6 is prepared. And white immediately exploited the absence of the knight on c6 to play d4 to grab even more space in the center. After c6, knight went to e3, e4, queen captured on d4, and as we may notice, uh, white is more or less ready to cast alone here, uh, which means that the weakening of squares on the king side is not critical here. Uh, moreover, if we consider white's next play, uh, it may be even very useful to have these pawns already advanced because white may think of just pushing them even further with the attack on the king side. So after knight to f5, uh, white captured on f5, bishop f5, e4, bishop to e6, knight to e2, absolutely normal development now. And it's clear that white is having tremendous uh, advantage in space already. It's really hard for black to uh, coordinate the pieces. So black decided to play c5, which weakens some squares, but at least uh, gives black a chance to come back with the knight to normal position. White continued with the bishop f4, exerting pressure on d6. After castling and castling, black played queen to c7 probably intending to bring the knight to e5, so from c7 the queen controls that square together with the pawn d6. And white continues with a simple king to b1. So white is not in a rush here, white's advantage is a long-term one. Black played bishop e7, white continues with the bishop to g3. Taking on g7 was a bit uh, dangerous because of black's knight e5 and the queen is almost trapped there. So just bishop g3, being ready to meet knight e5 with the f2, f4 at any moment. Black decided to respond with the f6, undermining g5 pawn. And white continued with the knight f4, attacking the bishop and exploiting the weakness of light squares. Bishop f7, bishop to h3, check. King to b8, another very strong move, bishop e6. Uh, all, all is possible because of the vulnerable light squares here. So if bishop takes bishop, there is knight e6 attacking both the queen and the rook. Black responded with the bishop to e8. And here came the uh, nice illustration of the importance of space and chess. So after knight to d5, uh, black simply resigned because now the queen has only one square to go away. It is a5. But after that, it's clear that the knight is overloaded. So white wins after simple queen a5, knight a5, and knight captures e7 with the extra minor piece. Let's have a look at the other line. So in this position, uh, development of the knight to either f6 or e7 is not that great. And as we have seen, given white uh, some space is uh, basically exactly what white wants here. Uh, we should ask a, a question what to do and uh, the next natural continuation here may be just d75 because this way black occupies the center, plays aggressively in the center and actually starts grabbing space first before white managed to do anything. So in this case uh, we deal with uh, the most uh, interesting part because uh, that is exactly what white is trying uh, to provoke black to do, uh, to occupy the center and to try to use this d5 and e5 pawns as targets for different undermining uh, moves. One of them uh, after d5 is uh, c4, another one is d4. Let us start with the d4. So the idea behind this move is that e5 is under attack and if, uh, for example, black captures on d4, then queen captures on d4 with the temple, attacking d5. And just like in uh, the previous example we have discussed, white is trying to combine the attack in the center with a quick preparation of 
the long castling and continue uh, with the attack at some point using the advanced g pawn. So the best and logical reaction for black after d4 is just to grab a bit more space in the center with the help of e4. And this strategy makes perfect sense because uh, one of the main strategic ideas here is to have the h1aa diagonal open. So as you may notice, black is trying to do everything to close it. So after e4, white may continue with the undermining activity. So this structure resembles a French one to some extent. Uh, black should continue with the c6. And after knight to c3, as you may notice, d5 may quickly become a serious problem for black because white is ready to bring the queen to b3 to attack d5. Then uh, whenever your knight is on f6, there is the pawn being ready to attack it. Uh, there are typical maneuvers from uh, English opening like knight to h3 followed by knight to f4. So black should be really careful here. Otherwise, uh, there is a huge risk of losing d5, and if that pawn drops, then the whole center is being destroyed. So, in my opinion, the best option for black here is just to play bishop b4 to combine the development with pinning one of the main attackers of d5. For example, after queen to b3 move, it's possible to keep the bishop here on this diagonal, so just bishop to a5, because of the pin d5 is not hanging. And after something like knight to h3, preparing this attack against d5, so as you may notice, knight f4 is coming, and it's really hard to prevent it, uh, black may think of the following continuation, it is d5 takes c4. It makes the pawn on e4 weak, but in this particular case, black is trying to compensate it with active uh, play of the pieces. Queen captures on c4, black continues with the tempo move, bishop to e6, attacking the queen, uh, then if queen goes to a4, let's say, there is a possibility to play b5 and win the pawn on d4. So white should probably try queen to c5, where after black makes another tempo move, it is knight to d7. And once the queen is away, it's possible to continue with the counterattack against d4, putting the queen on b6. So this position definitely requires additional analysis. It's not so clear what's going on here because e4 is handing, g4 is handing, d4 is handing, too many handing pawns here in both camps. But I have a feeling that black is doing okay here. Uh, white is also not at serious risk. So I would say that this position is more or less balanced. But just like with uh, the majority of lines in group attack, uh, there is no strict theory at all. Uh, so the point is just to analyze it yourself and uh, to try to practice it probably with both colors, it's funny. And uh, this way you will get to your own conclusions. Let's get back to the position after black's d5 and have a look at c4 line. So in this position, white tries another way to undermine uh, black's center with a c4. And in my opinion, in this particular case, it makes perfect sense just to take the pawn because if white is going to regain it, and white will definitely do uh, something like that, then black can use the pieces, get into c4 as targets, and continue the development with uh, some tempo gaining. Uh, for example, after queen to a4 check, uh, black may continue with the c6. Again, there is a barrier on the way of the light squared bishop, which is pretty logical. Queen captures on c4. Then black continues with the bishop to e6. As you can see, it is a quite modest approach. So black is not fighting for space aggressively anymore, not trying to uh, come up with some pawn chains and so on and so forth. So just normal development and uh, playing mainly against uh, white's plans for now. Queen to a4, knight to d7, preparing further attack against this vulnerable queen. For example, knight to c3, knight may go to c5, and it's already a problem to the g4 pawn, by the way. So after queen to c2, bishop captures on g4. Of course, white was not forced to uh, lose that pawn, and for example, here, once black created a threat of knight to c5, white could have protected it with the h3 move. But uh, it is already clear that white is not really getting anything specific, so position 
looks just like one from uh, English opening, I mean in the sense of the pawn structure. The difference being that, uh, well, it's not necessarily that great advantage of having the pawn on g4 here, because black didn't create some targets for this one. A pawn g4 may become a target itself, and as you can see already here, white is kind of forced to care about this pawn, not to lose it, which uh, is just a waste of time. Instead of developing pieces and making something useful, white is making pawn moves, while black is doing nothing wrong here. So just controlling the center together with pawns and pieces and uh, develop uh, their pieces to pretty natural squares, to be honest. So that is one approach that black can try. Uh, just e5 and then d5. Another option for black is to start with the d5 right after g4, and this may look even a better option because this way black attacks the pawn on g4. So let's have a look at that one. So right after g4, black continues with the d7, d5, and pawn on g4 is under attack. After bishop to g2, obviously black can just come back to what we have already discussed after e7, e5, and uh, I would probably recommend doing exactly that, but as I said before, well, there is no strict theory and uh, in many cases uh, the choice of this or that line is uh, simply a question of taste. So what is going on after bishop takes g4? At the very first glance it looks completely safe to take that pawn. But it appears that after c4 uh, black has two problems now. The one is d5 which is under pressure but another one is b7 which is abandoned. Uh, after black's bishop went away from c8. So uh, black has to be very careful here. Uh, for example, after uh, c6 move, protecting the pawn and uh, let's say cd5, cd5 and queen to b3, attacking both d5 and b7, it's not possible to protect pawn on d5 this way because this breaks the connection between the bishop and d7 square, which means after queen to a4, white wins because of the double attack. It is one of the most famous traps in grub attack, uh, worth remembering, because there are so many people who uh, fall into this trap. So it's a pretty common mistake, especially if you play bleeds or rapid games. So instead of doing that, black may continue with the knight to f6 move here, and after queen captures b7, let's say, uh, black may play knight to d7. Continuing with the development, again, just like in many, many cases, uh, development is probably the best reaction to the gambit. And it appears that uh, white doesn't really have much in this position because uh, pawn on d5 is invulnerable because of the following. So if white takes on d5, then there is rook to b8, attacking queen, and we can see that to save the bishop on d5, queen has to go to c6, the only square, and now rook goes to c8, and here we go, bishop on c1 is not protected, so if queen goes away somewhere, uh, black just takes on c1 with a checkmate. So this wins instantly for black, which means d5 is indeed not possible to capture, which means White doesn't have the advantage in development whatsoever here. A pawn structure is probably a bit better for black, so I guess there are no problems at all. Another possibility uh, for white is just to play queen to b3 before taking the pawn on d5. Let's have a look at that line. So right after c6, white may continue with the queen to b3, attacking b7 and uh, d5. So again, there are different ways for uh, black to respond. Before white captured on d5, it is perfectly fine for black to play e6 move. Because now if uh, white decides to take on d5, black is obviously not forced to take with the c pawn, losing the bishop again, but ed5 becomes an option. In which case, after queen takes b7, position looks dangerous at first glance. But after simple knight to d7, we can see that black is doing perfectly again. So the thing is that c6 is not vulnerable, is not 
possible to capture here because of the vulnerability of the bishop on c1. Again, the same motive. If uh, queen takes on c6, rook to c8 just wins the game instantly. So white has to continue with the knight to c3 first to develop the knight and protect the bishop to make c6 really hand in. But it appears that black has no problems with just protecting it with the rook. And now uh, black may even grab the initiative because if white is too greedy and takes the pawn on a7, there is bishop to c5, a temple development. Um, so in general, black has no problems with the development here. Uh, there are so many different uh, squares ready to be occupied by minor pieces. Some of them are being occupied with the temple because of the vulnerability of the queen. And again, pay attention to the pawn structure. Uh, it's pretty messy in white's camp, so it's really hard for white to castle short in these situations. And castling long requires uh, spending uh, a lot of uh, moves, which may be complicated, again, mainly because of that queen. So as you can see, there are two approaches against group attack for black. Uh, they are connected with uh, normal development of the pieces. Uh, so in case of e5 and d5, uh, black decides to, you know, give up a central pawn at some point and prefer just normal development of the pieces. In case of d5, well, uh, black is really having this uh, central pawn, but again, uh, is ready to sacrifice something for the development. So in general, the normal development of the pieces is probably the best reply against grub attack. But you should also understand that we uh, have discussed just a few lines to cover basic ideas. So there is much more to this opening. If you investigate uh, with the help of the database, you will find lots of different directions, lots of different lines for both sides. So have fun with this. I think uh, it's an interesting choice uh, for Rapid and Bleeds games. It may come as a surprise weapon as well. So no problems with that. Um, analyze it, experience the uh, freedom of uh, just playing chess because there is no strict theory and I think you will have uh, some benefits from it. And now let's get to the exercise part. So here is our position. It has arisen in the game between uh, Basman and Plaskett. By the way, Basman was uh, one of the enthusiasts of the Grub attack, so you can watch some of his games on the database. And here we may notice that White made a progress on the king side. There is no h pawn anymore. There is a pressure on h7, and this pawn, uh, which went from g4 to g5, uh, is actually playing a very active role in the game. So, in this position. Uh, the best way for black to play is just something like knight to d4, uh, getting to some simplifications in the center. But in the game, black decided to jump with the knight to b4, which also looks interesting because there is a pressure on c2 and uh, the bishop on d5. So here is the starting position of the exercise. Uh, your task is to find the best continuation for white. Feel free to pause the video and uh, try to solve it yourself and restart the video whenever you think you are having the solution. Let's discuss what's going on here. So it appears that knight b4 is a very bad move because white may continue with a3, completely ignoring the threats that black has created with the help of this knight b4 move. So let us start with uh, normal knight takes d5 continuation. So what's going on here? Uh, if knight captures d5, then knight takes d5, and here we can see a problem. So the queen is under attack, the pawn is under attack, and the knight on f5 is not protected. So in many cases, if queen leaves the uh, e-file, there will be something like queen to e4. Let's say uh, queen goes to d6. Now queen goes to e4, check. Knight comes back to e7 because it is strictly the only move. And White may continue with the c4, supporting the knight on d5, and it's clear that white is just dominating here, because h7 is under pressure, the knight on d7 is pinned, c7 is a problem, so bishop f4 is coming, and there is also a problem with the bishop on c5, which has not so much space. So something like b4, with the idea to trap this bishop, is also something that can be considered a threat. So knight takes d5 doesn't quite work. Let's have a look at other options that black have in this position. 
Since the bishop on d5 is already under pressure, black may consider something like bishop takes f2. So the idea being to attract the king to f2, where after queen jumps to c5 with the attack against the king and the bishop. But this fails uh, to king to g2, knight captures on d5, knight captures on d5, queen captures on d5, and finally e4 with the fork. And this doesn't work either. Let's have a look at other options. So finally, uh, knight to c6 just going back, it's clearly a waste of time, but is it that critical? Well, it appears that yes, because here uh, white may continue with the g6. So the pawn, which was considered quite vulnerable on g4 right after the first move, now uh, enables white's amazing attack. So after g6, uh, f7 is under attack, so f takes g6 is literally forced in this situation. And uh, after that move, white may continue with the bishop to g5, immediately attacking uh, the queen. And we can see that there is a problem with finding a good square for it, because almost everything is controlled, and uh, there's still this problem with the c7, for example, if queen goes to d6 or something like that, then uh, knight can jump to b5, attacking the queen and intending just to take on c7, and it appears that queen d5 leads to knight to c7 fork. So queen d8 is not possible at all after bishop to g5, which means that the only move is queen to f8, which is already quite ugly. Uh, here white continues with the attack. There are different options, but uh, the most natural one is to attack the point which is abandoned at the moment. So knight can jump to b5. c7 is under attack, the only sensible defense is bishop to b6, where after white may castle. Queen e4 check is always possible, but I think in this particular situation white is not in a rush with that check. Uh, we can see that uh, Black is in real trouble because there is no development, no coordination between the pieces and white's attack is being developed naturally. There are so many different ideas, uh, including queen to e4, maybe some rook lifts like rook h4 and rook to e4. Everything active that comes to your mind is uh, easily implementable here uh, from white's perspective. So that is the solution. I hope you uh, have found it yourself. If not, well, just keep on training and you're going to be better at some point. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you got some understanding of the grub attack. As I mentioned before, uh, it's definitely not the uh, theoretical manual. So uh, there are so many different lines and possibilities for both sides. Uh, just uh, keep on investigating it uh, yourself and you will find uh, interesting ways to play it with both colors. Uh, if you like this content, don't forget to press the like button and I see you in the next videos.